Flexibilis is a company that develops FPGA-based communication products and intellectual property, IP for short. The main business is licensing of IP cards for device manufacturers. Our main product is the Flexibilis Redundant Switch, FRS for short. In this video, I will first tell shortly what is FRS, followed by what and why is redundant communication important. Then I present the basics of HSR and PRP, two protocols for redundant communication. The video is continued in the second part, in which I will tell more about FRS. FRS is an IP core for FPGA. It is a full wire speed Ethernet switch and supports 10, 100 or 1000 megabits per second in all of the ports. FRS has HSR, PRP and 1588 support. It can also have up to 8 ports. In the pictures, you can see FPGA evaluation boards in the demo setup for FRS. So why do we need redundant communication? In critical applications, reliability is very important and the network needs to be fully operational all the time, 24-7. So successful Ethernet usage in critical networks requires zero-loss redundancy. This means that there cannot be a link or a node that is a single point of failure. There also needs to be zero-time recovery. This way, no packets are lost. There exist two protocols that can meet this requirement for zero-loss redundancy. These are HSR and PRP. HSR means high availability seamless redundancy and PRP is parallel redundancy protocol. The difference between these two are that HSR has double data and PRP doubles everything. The advantage over, for example, rapid spanning tree protocol RSTP for short, is that HSR and PRP have zero-time recovery in case of failure. RSTP along with other similar protocols have failover times that can increase with the size of the network. Therefore, HSR can be considered the most effective redundancy solution available for wired Ethernet at the moment. The benefits of HSR and PRP are that there is zero downtime during maintenance. The ne network is fully operational 24-7, even during maintenance, since any device can be disconnected and replaced without breaking the network connectivity. HSR and PRP were originally designed for electrical substation automation. There, Network redundancy is very important both for safety and to guarantee availability for electricity. HSR and PRP can also be used in other kind of power networks, like wind farms and solar power. Another application for HSR and PRP is in industrial automation. They can be used for example in robotics and motor control as well as in unmanned, remotely controlled vehicles or machines, the kind they have for example in harbors. These protocols can be useful also in transportation, especially in vehicles like airplanes, trains and ships. Their application there could be for example security or control systems like flyby optics. Yet another application is networking equipment like Ethernet switches. However, these are not the only applications, but HSR and PRP can be implemented anywhere where Ethernet is used. It is suitable for all applications that require real-time control or where the network must be in use 24-7. This requirement could be because network and availability can cause damage, injuries or increased costs.
HSR is typically implemented in a ring topology. However, while a ring is the most common at the moment, it is not the only possible way. HSR can also be constructed as a ring of rings and other more complex topologies. Ring topology doesn't require separate switches, but the nodes themselves do the switching, since every node has an internal Ethernet switch. In HSR, the source node duplicates the frames and sends them to the destination using two different paths, as you can see in the picture. Even if one node or link breaks down, the packet still reaches the destination the other way. In PRP, on the other hand, is typically implemented in a double star topology. HSR can also be used in this same topology. In double star, each node is connected to two separated parallel local area networks. In this picture, it's a very simple setup. As in HSR, in PRP, the source node also sends two copies of each packet, one over each network. PRP requires that everything is doubled, the switches, the cables, and the data. HSR doesn't require as much cabling and doesn't need dedicated switches, so, it is, so it's less expensive and still provides the same level of redundancy. In both HSR and PRP, when the two packets arrive, the destination node removes the duplicate. It only delivers the first frame to the upper layers and discards the second. This means that missing the other frame does not affect upper layers and they still get all the needed data. HSR and PRP are not visible to upper layers and do not affect them in any way, including the IP layer. This means that there is no need to do changes to the higher layers when implementing HSR or PRP. This is the end of the first part. Please continue to the second one in which I will tell more about flexible redundant switch. Thank you for listening.